from the far north came a thing that was more beast than man. A monster who could near single-handedly slaughter armies and could raise cities to the ground. They say his hounds of war could face off against the mightiest warriors of all nations and that his foes fled at their cries. This man has many names. The Orphan Maker, the King Breaker, the Boar King, the Monster of the North, but his birth name. The name given to him from whatever twisted room he crawled from was On Grimastruga. Howdy everyone, I'm the Shadow of the Hawk, and if you're still passed after that little edgy paragraph, no, that's not something I'm ripping off. That is a character from a CK3 playthrough I did. For those of you who don't know what CK3 is, it's an amazing strategy game, and you can do some pretty twisted things, is all I'm going to say. Now, why did I open with that? Well, I'm burning a sacred cow, or rather, a sacred pig, and if you read the title, you probably have an, a rough idea about the fact that I have issues with Technoblade's anarchy philosophy, and... I can't believe I actually have to do this, but knowing the fandom that I'm touching on and knowing how YouTube is, this is not an attack on Technoblade. This is a critique of the philosophy that he has displayed in the Dream SMP. And I am fully aware that even with that disclaimer, you guys are going to dislike this video to hell. So if you could at least do me one favor and leave a comment as to why you think that I deserve to be disliked to hell and... If you do that, I will attempt to post how many dislikes there are in the comments, because YouTube got rid of the dislike button. <laughs> Fucking bastards. Anyway, um, yeah, so let's get started. And the first thing we need to do is define the terms that we will be using, since different people have different definitions and views on anarchy, governance, etc., etc. So we, to avoid an argument in the comments, will be using the definitions presented from the Dream SMP and Technoblade's actions. Specifically two instances which give us an insight into his anarchistic beliefs. The first is the destruction of Neil Lemanberg or Lemanberg after they got rid of Schlatt, in which he executes Tubbo and then spawns a pair of withers and destroys everything. This establishes that Technoblade does not trust any sort of government, even if it's benevolent or too stupid to hurt its subjects. The other example is not one you would probably think. You're probably thinking the second time he destroyed Lemanberg. I wouldn't classify that as him acting on his philosophy, primarily because this was done in retaliation to the attack by the Butcher Army. So that's less him destroying a government out of principles and more, they came after me, I'm punching them back harder. Plus also he was pissed at Tommy. Again, not anarchy. No, the example I will be using is the Eggpire. And at first, this doesn't seem to add much to the discussion aside from he hates tyrants, which we got from Schlatt. But to my knowledge, the Eggpire never directly affected Technoblade. Meaning that it tells us that even a government that had nothing to do with Technoblade, it still goes into his crosshairs. So that gives us the following three points about Technoblade's views of anarchy. Number one, a government is a system where one person or more people hold power over a group of individuals. Two, all governance will lead to the oppression of the populace, no matter how benevolent or stupid a leader or governing body may be. And three, all governance, no matter how benevolent, must be eradicated for citizenry to enjoy true happiness. Now, I am fully aware that not every anarchist holds these values. But we are not talking about anarchists, we are talking about the character of Technoblade. And based on these criteria alone, there is a dangerous precedent being set. And to understand why, we need to talk a little bit about Hobbes and Rousseau. To, to simplify the beliefs of these two men, because I don't want this video to be crazy long, um, effectively, Hobbes believed in the natural state of humanity we would murder, pillage, and enslave just because we can. And the idea of the social contract or different people giving up certain freedoms for safety is why we aren't just killing, murdering, pillaging, and stealing from each other. 
Rousseau believed that the idea of a social contract is what led to all these sins and the oppressions of humanity. The idea being that in our natural state, we would never interact with humans outside of our family groups, meaning the only reason we exhibit any of these horrific actions is because we are forced together rather than being allowed to live naturally. And both of these men, their philosophies have some merits to them. And both of these philosophies have some accuracy to them. But in the context of the Dream SMP, Rousseau's beliefs are skewed and flawed. See, the Dream SMP is not being played by natural humans. They're being played by... Did I say they? No, I meant it. It is not being played by natural humans. It is being played by modern humans. And those modern humans suffer from all the associated sins that Rousseau places on society. Now, there is also no strong governing body, nothing keeping them from murdering, stealing, or killing each other. So, Hobbes, his beliefs also apply here. So not only do you have a mind from a from society that has been twisted by society, you also have the freedom that the natural state provides, which will lead to all the violence the natural state provides. Now, what does it have to do with Technoblade? See, what Technoblade is doing by destroying all forms of governance is he is creating power vacuums. And right now, there is no problem with that because every time a tyrant or an oppressor steps in, Technoblade is going to kick them in the balls, the face, the kneecaps, and then throw them in the water face first and let them drown and die. But what happens when Technoblade is gone? What happens when Technoblade is just, he's not on the table anymore? What if someone manages to take Techno off the table? There is nothing to stop tyranny. You could have another schlat or another dream, and there would be no one to stop them. And for all its flaws, Lemanberg did just that. It managed to keep the tyrant of dream in check. Now, yes, Schlatt did take it over. That that was what ha- that is the thing that happened. However, that was a freak incident based on a manipulation of the election system. So, what does this mean for Technoblade's philosophy? Well, in a twisted turn of events, he's a tyrant. He he keeps people in the state that he wishes through terror and force. He enacts his doctrine of freedom for all through threat of violence. And the moment he's gone, I guarantee that there will be a schlat or a dream to step in and just take over. Now, this all wouldn't be the case. This all would be totally true if there wasn't for one tiny little detail. Technoblade said this. Lies, Connor. That's what our organization is about, is, is building up uh, building I up appreciate each other it. for I yeah, really, I appreciate it. It's, it, it's nice to have friends and allies, you know. Our organization so sometimes. Is, is about helping each other so we can achieve self-sufficiency? What? This thing, this little thing, this one freling thing completely changes the entire context of the situation. Why? Well, it falls back on a philosophy expressed in Fallout 3. If everyone is lethally dangerous, no one is. Now, I want you to imagine for a moment that you're a dream or schlatt, you have all this power and might, and you are a strong dictatore. And you see a, a, a lonely little peasant, someone for you to oppress and conquer, and you stomp on over there, and this individual is decked out in god-level netherite and has been trained in PvP and has a ton of potions. What is going to happen? You are either going to die, or you are going to expend more resources than it was worth to bring this person under your control. Meaning, you're going to have to move on to the next person. Oh, that person is just as strong. Okay, let's move on to... That person is just as strong. Let's move on. That person is just as strong. Technoblade is creating a system where it is literally too much of an investment to oppress other people, to become a tyrant. It is... You would basically need to convince other people, hey, you should be under me. And in a world like Minecraft, where all resources are basically infinite if you put the time into it, there's no reason to go under another person, save for security and protection. But if you're able to defend yourself thanks to Technoblade training you, there's no need to ever subject yourself to another authority. Meaning, 
the research, the week of research and the writing for the script and all of that is completely null and void. All because Techno said one one-off line to expand the lore of his character. So. I'm going to boot up some CK3. I'm going to burn down Wessex for the memes. And uh, thanks for watching. Have a good day. Bye.